Greetings and salutations. Some sad news before we get into the video. My Stanton 680EL cartridge is on the injured list. I had it for about a week and a half. Those of you who watched my last video about it know that I was very tickled to have it. This is a 40-year-old professional phono cartridge that I remember quite fondly. I was enjoying playing lots of different kinds of records on it. And then I noticed that it looked a little bit crooked in the head shell. And I thought, what's up with that? I took the head shell off the turntable and I gave it a little wiggle. And the 40-year-old weld that holds the wings on top of the cartridge just popped right off. So, it opened up a head shell. <laughs> I figured I would buy another phono cartridge, and I did. I got me the Goldbring E3, which is what this video is about. Now, as far as this cartridge is concerned, I'm not really all that upset. First of all, Stanton 680EL bodies come up on eBay all the time with no hardware and no stylus. So therefore, it should be pretty easy to pick one up cheap, put things back together, and get this functioning again. I had it long enough to answer the question, though. I wanted to know why it was I held this cartridge in such high esteem. And the reason turned out to be, after listening to it, is the fact that it's very neutral. It is a cartridge that does not try and extend the highs and the lows. You don't have a bumped up bass like the Nagaoka MP110. You don't have screaming treble like the high-end Audio-Technica carts. The VM530 series, for instance, is known for its very crisp high-end. Now, this cartridge was very flat, very comparable to digital files. I mean, I recorded some things, put them in the computer, played them side by side, and I was impressed how well everything blended together. It wasn't really obvious, oh, that's a record, and oh, that's digital. No, everything sounded like it should go together, because I remember these cartridges back in the days of radio when we were playing CDs and records together, and I don't remember things being glaringly different. I mean, you could tell if you were listening to a CD or a record, but uh, as far as like the, the general uh, tonal quality of it, it wouldn't change that much. So I got what I wanted out of this cartridge for sure. I bought the gold ring thinking that I wasn't going to do a video about it. I didn't think that it would be that big a deal. I bought it because I was looking for neutral and everything that I read about it said that the gold ring E3 was a very neutral, affordable, fun cartridge. And it is. And I'm going to tell you all about it. I ordered my gold ring for $149 off of Amazon. It showed up in this lovely box. And inside the box, I found the cartridge. And there is hardware underneath that little hex wrench there. And on top of this, you get a little manual that explains everything about it. This cartridge tracks at 2 grams. It has a 0.3 by 0.7 elliptical stylus and it is based on an Audio Technica body. In other words, what Gold Ring has done is they have designed a cartridge in the UK and then they're having it made in Japan with some Audio Technica parts and I assume that they are making the styli or at least giving the folks in Japan the specifications for them. I'm not exactly sure how that works. This isn't new for Gold Ring. Before this series of cartridges came along they had the Elan and the Electra and they were both based on the Ed Saunders quote-unquote Red Ed cartridge. Super fine cartridges, by the way, the Elan and the Electra. They sound wonderful. Lightweight cartridges, only 4 grams. That's a bit of a problem with modern turntables. Medium-priced turntables, we're talking anywhere from 250 to maybe $1,000, they pretty much have medium mass tone arms. They're looking for cartridges with a bit of heft, 6 to 7 grams. Well, they took care of that here. Now, I don't know exactly what Audio-Technica body they're using. I remember reading a long time ago that it was the VM95E generator that they were using. I cannot find any documentation about that now, so I'm not really sure. Either way, it's it's a wonderful sounding cartridge, and I have no problem even if it is a VM95E in a different body because uh, they did just such a lovely job 
with the design of this cartridge. There are several things I like about it. First of all, it's chunky, it's hefty. This thing works really well on my S-shaped tone arm on my Fluence turntable. Therefore, I know it would work well on, let's say, a dual or uh, one of the S-shaped Techniques turntables that are out now. Audio-Technica has the same arm. They all work really well with these kinds of cartridges. About the this weight, tracking at about 2 grams, is perfect for them. So I put it on my turntable, and as you can see, I have quite a bit of dust on the cartridge. You never see this stuff when you're taking pictures. You only see it after you take the picture. But the reason why is because I have been using this thing to listen to records. I love the way it sounds. And we'll look at the specifications in just a few moments on the web page. It's very conservatively rated. You would think for the price, like I said, $150, that it was going to be decent. But there's a lot of $150 cartridges out there that I have found very disappointing. I've heard sibilance, distortion, I've heard problems with it. The Gold Ring folks have really concentrated on the stylus for these cartridges. And that's really where the effort needs to be made. They have tuned it all along the way and made sure that everything was neatly aligned and very well balanced. So therefore, you get great stereo imaging. It's wonderful. Better than some of the cartridges I've paid more money for. It certainly is better than the um, ATVM95EN which is the closest thing in price that I have to it, stereo-wise. This has a, a very immersive sound stage. I don't want to sound like some hoity-toity audiophile foo-foo, but that's the only way to do it. I mean, to say it, you've got to hear this thing to believe it. It is really very good at picking out instruments. I was listening to one album that had a, a live recording on it, and they had a stereo recording of the applause, and you could actually, as you were listening pick out one person in the audience clapping with this cartridge, which is amazing. That's not something you hear on most cartridges that are $150. It's incredibly detailed and tonally very well balanced. If it is anything, it is slightly, and I mean ever so slightly, on the warm side. Not as much as an MP110 by Nagalka, or, uh, you know, like that. It doesn't really push that bass forward. It doesn't have a flabby bass like the um, Ortophone OM5E does. It's very tight. It's very controlled, but it's definitely there, and you can hear everything that's going on. Where it really, really shines is in the mid-range. The mid-range is very clean, very dynamic, and it just grabs you. This cartridge is very well designed. It has punch and clarity to it. And if I really want to be nitpicky, the only thing that I've heard is way up top, sometimes on a few things, you'll hear some harsh sounds on S's. Not quite sibilance. It's not like a complete splatter that, you know, really rattles you and you go, oh, that sounds horrible. It's just this very slight hint of harshness. But you're probably going to get that from a 0.3 by 0.7 stylus anyway. Doesn't matter the construction. It is a bonded 0.3 by 0.7 stylus in this case as well. So let's take a look at the specifications very quickly here. Over here on the Gold Ring webpage, uh, looking at their moving magnet cartridges, uh, they show an E3 right up front there, and then they explain a little bit about how moving magnet cartridges work. There's some pretty good hi-fi blah blah pseudoscience stuff going on here if you want to actually go through and read this. They have the E-Series here. They also talk about the 1000 series. Now, these are much more expensive cartridges because they are handmade, and uh, that's in a completely different league. And then the E3 uh, and the e e two, E1, 2, and 3 are here. What is the difference between the E1, the E2, and the E3? Well, the E1 has a carbon fiber cantilever with a 0.6 mil stylus on it. I am going to assume that that's pretty much going to be a stock AT stylus because that is something that AT puts out on a lot of their carts as a carbon fiber cantilever. You'll find it on the AT3600L, the 91B has it, which may mean that the body that this is based on could be the 211 body, which is the AT3600 series. I don't know. I had heard VM95E earlier, but 
none of the VM95E cartridges come with a carbon fiber cantilever. They all have aluminum. The E2 is still a spherical stylus, conical if you will, but it has an aluminum cantilever. And the E3 is uh, the one with the 0.3 by 0.7 super elliptical, they call it. So let's take a look over here. And there's a little bit of an overview. This cartridge has won a lot of awards from what high fi <laughs> That's pretty cool. And let's see, what are we looking at here? Don't you miss the days when web pages made more sense? And they just put it all up there and it was a matter of scrolling through text and now there's four million men menus to try and make things all mobile friendly and whatnot. Specifications is what we were looking for. And that was at the top. So let's see if we have anything that jumps out here. Color is violet. Aluminum cantilever. Elliptical stylus. 0.3 by 0.7 mil. Uh, which, by the way, is not related to millimeter. A mil is one one thousandth of an inch. 20 to 20,000 for the frequency response. Uh, and my mouse jumped me up to the top of the page. It does that every now and again. I don't know why. All you got to do is barely touch the little scroll wheel and it goes crazy. Anyway, uh, 1.5 dB at 1 kilohertz as far as channel balance is concerned. I think that's a very conservative rating. Mine was dead on. I put a mono record on and it was just exactly what it was supposed to be. Uh, and then the stereo separation. They're saying greater than 20 at one kilohertz. I, I would like to see somebody bench test this cartridge and find out what it really is because the stereo imaging is is just magnificent at $149. Uh, the only cartridges that I have that could be slightly better would be the ATVM540ML with a microline stylus, although it doesn't have the richness that this cartridge has. I really like the tonal quality of this cartridge, whereas the ML tends to be a bit sterile, actually. Uh, on certain records, on some records it sounds great. It really just comes to life. And then on other things it can be slightly harsh. And, I, of course, it does have that crisp high end already there. That's an AT cartridge thing anyway. And sometimes it doubles up, I guess is the best way to put it. But I'm still comparing the two. Uh, 3.5 microvolt or millivolt output, I should say. Uh, let's see what else. Is there anything here? Just pretty much standard. 6.9 grams. It's a hefty cartridge at almost 7 grams. Great for the kind of tone arms that are available on mid-price turntables these days. Works beautiful with S-shaped tone arms. I could see this going on project turntables. Uh, the midline for them as well so uh, very cool indeed what a great cartridge so that's just about it uh, really there's not much more to say I don't have a great deal of negative that I can add the only con that I could come up with with this particular cartridge is because it is a bonded 0.3 by 0.7 stylus there are certain records that I have played that you will occasionally hear occasionally here some harshness around the s's it's it's like um not quite sibilance in the traditional sense of being like a, a splatter but every now and again something will come along that'll jump out at you as being just a little not quite as smooth as it should be but this is a very rare occasion and even when it does it's not enough to jar you or go Ooh, that's terrible i don't want to hear that this is a great cartridge for everyday listening if you have 45s and LPs. I mean, part of the problem that I have with running the VM540ML on my turntable all the time is I like to listen to 45s. And advanced stylus shapes like Microline, they tend to be rather harsh on polystyrene 45s, and I have a ton of those. And so therefore, I would have to stop and change styli or change turntables. I have a turntable set up with a AT91B on it, as I showed in my audio tour uh, not too long ago, and um, 
I will use that a lot of the times for styrene 45s. But this is nice if I'm just going to play one or two to be able to throw that on the fluence without having to switch gears and do other things. So I like that part about it. And I just simply think it's a great bang for the buck. It is a very good sounding, very refined cartridge that I wouldn't have a problem with living with if it was the only cartridge that I had. And it's a little bit more than a pizza dinner. And it, by the way, it is way better than the 2M Red by Ortofone. Uh, Ortofone's low-end cartridges are great, but they suffer from the crappy styli that Ortofone has at that level. The bonded styli that Ortofone puts out with the OM5E, the OM10, and the 2M Red are just hideous. Uh, so you don't really get the best out of those cartridges. In the case of Ortofone, a 2M Blue is going to get you a much better sound, and they now you're talking about jumping up in price. You're, you're talking about what is a, a 2M Blue is almost $300 US right now. And if you can find an OM20, those are great cartridges, but that's also well north of $200, almost $300 for that cartridge. Whereas this is a little bit cheaper, $150. It fits in real nice, and it's great if you're just starting out or if you have a secondary turntable that you need a new cartridge on. If you're not real confident about mounting a cartridge, well, this is super easy. There's no nuts and bolts. It's easy to do. You just put it on the head shell, screw it down, take your alignment protractor, and it's got nice square sides and edges. Believe me, this thing is super easy to align. You can see the stylus. I really like it. I am just super impressed with it, and I can't find much negative to say about it. So that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Comments, suggestions, always welcome. If you like what you see, get a, give it a like. That helps YouTube to realize that people like the video. And the other thing that you can do is share it with your friends because that will generate more views. And those are the two things I ask you to do if you like my videos. And go watch another one. That helps too. <laughs> All right, we'll do it again soon, guys.